Hello and welcome everyone to our latest journal review on dexmedetomidine or propofol for sedation in mechanically ventilated adults with sepsis. This is the MENS 2 study which has been published recently in NEJ. So in basic and translational studies have shown that among the recommended sedatives, dexmedetomidine has anti-inflammatory and bacterial clearance properties that are superior to those of GABA agonist. It also reduces neuronal apoptosis and promotes a biomimetic sleep, all of which improve the clinical outcome. These were the studies which were published around 2007 and 2008. For the first one is dexmedetomidine versus midazolam for sedation in critically ill patients. This was published in JAMA. They concluded that there was no difference between dexmedetomidine and midazolam in time at targeted sedation levels in mechanically ventilated patients and at comparable sedation doses, dexmetatomidine treated patients spent less time on mechanical ventilator, experienced less delirium and developed less tachycardia. And the most notable adverse effect in dexmetatomidine was bradycardia. So overall, we found benefit of using dexmetatomidine in critically ill patients. The second was dexmetatomidine versus LoRa. This was again the MENTS, the first trial. It was published in JAMA. It showed that in mechanically ventilated patients, the use of dexmetatomidine resulted in more days alive without delirium and coma. So it was found superior to lorazepam. So based on these two studies, they produced the MENTS 2 trial. The MENTS 2 means maximizing the efficacy of sedation and reducing neurological dysfunction and mortality in septic patients with acute respiratory failure. To test whether dexpetidomidine led to better short-term and long-term outcomes in comparison to propofol. So this time the comparison was done with propofol to find the benefit over it in patients who had sepsis. Coming first to the method, it was a double-blind, randomized control trial conducted in 13 medical centers in the United States. The inclusion criteria were adults who were sequentially admitted to medical or surgical ICU with a suspected or known infection and requiring mechanical ventilation resulting in a need for continuous sedation. The exclusion criteria is severe cognitive impairment, pregnant or breastfeeding, blind, deaf or who is unable to understand the approved languages, second degree or third degree heart block or persistent bradycardia, allergy to any of the study drugs, indication for benzodiazepine for any other causes, neuromuscular blockade for more than 48 hours, moribund state, or patient who had received mechanical ventilation for more than 96 hours before meeting all the inclusion criteria. The trial intervention and measurements. Dexmetatomidine at 5 microgram per milliliter and propofol 10 milligram per milliliter in identical intravenous fluid bags covered with opaque plastic was administered in units of milliliters per hour to maintain the steady masking. This was continued for day 14 or extubation or death. If the patient was extubated and reintubated, then the study medication was continued. The trial drug was permanently discontinued if the patient had persistent symptomatic bradycardia, new onset second or third degree heart block, serious allergic reaction, or suspected propofol related infusion syndrome. The trial endpoints. The primary efficacy and endpoint was the number of calendar days alive without delirium or coma during the 14-day intervention period. The secondary efficacy endpoints were ventilator free days at day 28, death at day 90, and global cognition at 6 months using the age adjusted tick total score. So if we see how the patients were recruited, total 4,840 patients were eligible out of which 4,402 were excluded. This is a very large amount of exclusion. Almost 90% of the patients were excluded. So out of this, only 438 could be enrolled. Six 
were ineligible again. So 432 were randomized, 216 in each group. But again, eight patients in the propofol group and two patients in the dexmedetomidine group were removed because they got extubated and weaned off early. So totally, we had 208 patients who were analyzed in propofol group and 214 in the dexmedetomidine group. If we look at long-term follow-up at six months, 101 were analyzed in the propofol group and 108 in the dexmedetomidine group. So let's look at the demographic profile. The median age was around 60. The percentage of female was around 40%. Most of the patients were white and they had a similar comorbidity index. Most of the admissions in the ICU were in the medical ICU while surgical ICU had only 35% admissions. The median Apache, which is important, was 27. The median days from ICU admission to trial enrollment was around one day. Mechanical ventilation to trial enrollment was again similar around one day. The median SOFA was 10 in both the groups. The requirement of vasopressor was 56 in the dexmedetomidine and 49 in the propofol. Most of the infection was again in the lungs, that is pneumonia. 12 to 16 percent of the patients received dexmedetomidine prior to enrollment and almost 60 percent received propofol prior to enrollment. Antipsychotic medications almost 11 to 13 percent of the patients were receiving. Delirium at enrollment was around 40 percent. Now, if you look at the intervention, the median hours from meeting inclusion to drug initiation was almost one day, 22 hours. Median hours from randomization to drug initiation was around one hour. Now, median days for receiving the drug was only three to four days. So it was not that the patients received the drugs for too long a period of time. It was only two to three days. So maybe the final result was because of the fact that most of the patient did not receive the lung drug for too long. Now the median doses are given over here. The withdrawal of trial during hospitalization was around 5%. Again, very important. The median RAS was similar. So the sedation was same in both the groups. Percentage time at target sedation was also similar. The median CPOT was same. Now all the other parameters are roughly equal. The fentanyl was quite used in both the groups. Now, if you look at the primary endpoint, the days alive without delirium or coma, it was similar in both the groups. There was no statistical difference or even clinical difference. Coming to the secondary endpoints, that is ventilator free days at day 28, death at day 90, ticks T score at six months were all similar. There was no difference between the two groups. So the author's conclusion was that among mechanically ventilated adults with sepsis who were being treated with recommended light sedation approaches, outcomes in patients who received dexmedetomidine did not differ from outcome in those who received propofol. Now let's see what are the limitations of this trial. Can we really take this conclusion into our understanding? Almost 14% of the patients were not blinded. It means that even though they tried to do double blinding, in 14% of the patients, the treating team came to know what was the drug which was being given. Now, as we saw, there was a large use of opioids. So it could have affected the outcome. It could have confounded the findings. The sample size was reduced between the study because there was very low recruitment but they claim that the power was still maintained around 80 percent but they could not achieve the target which they had set out with now the stay on ventilator as we saw was very less only three to four days of median drug was given to the patient which is very small amount of time it is not that these patients were a long-term ventilator or the sedation could have affected their metabolism so much that we could find an effect after six months. Finally, there was quite significant use of propofol 
known use of propofol in dexam group also which is which could have meant because the sedation level could not be achieved by using dexam at that level now our take is there was no benefit of dexam over propofol in this particular trial but it is not something which we use routinely as our primary initiating sedation in patients who are started on mechanical ventilation so we will continue to use it only for weaning purposes and we will not use dexam as an initial sedation agent thank you for your patience and check our website for further information